Hi! In parts 1 and 2 of this tutorial, we'll look at the essentials needed for using virtual instruments in Music Maker. In this part 1 of this tutorial, we'll go through the essential things that you need to know to get VST instruments working up to recording. In part 2, we'll look at recording and the MIDI objects created. I'm using Music Maker 2023, which is version 31 something, along with Premium Edition 2022. You'll probably see things that you don't have, especially if you're using the free version. Before starting, I want to point out that sound pool instruments are not VSTIs, with some possible exceptions, and thus cannot be played, so please do not confuse the two. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology and is an audio plug-in interface that integrates software synthesizers into digital audio workstations like Music Maker. VST instruments generate audio and are generally either virtual synthesizers, which generate their own waveform from an oscillator, or virtual samplers, which rely on a pre-recorded piece of sound, which it then manipulates. The difference between synthesizers and samplers becomes blurred, as samplers usually include synthesizer circuitry to further modify their samples with filters, envelopes, LFOs, etc. Magic sells both synthesizers and samplers in the store. Sometimes it's not obvious which is which, but for the most part, synthesizers, like Analog Synths, DNE1, and Revolta 2, are readily identified as synthesizers. Samplers use recorded sound, so acoustic instruments would more than likely be samplers. Examples of samplers would be Vita Solo instruments like Concert Grand LE, or the full version of Concert Grand, Grand Piano, and Church Organ. Recording using a VST instrument creates a MIDI file, not an audio file. Music Maker Free Edition comes with three VST instruments, Concert Grand LE, Revolta 2, and Vita 2, with some presets. Plus and premium editions give you more VST instruments and you can see the list in the comparison table on the magics.com website. An ASIO driver is needed to play VST instruments. ASIO, or Audio Stream Input Output, is a computer sound card driver protocol for digital audio specified by Steinberg. A couple of ASIO drivers come with Music Maker. Music Maker ASIO has been added to Music Maker 2023 and you can use it. If you want an alternative, you can download and install ASIO for All, which is available free from the internet. Better still is purchasing an interface card like M Audio, Behringer, or Focusrite that comes with a low latency ASIO driver. Go to the program settings, audio MIDI tab, audio playback. Select an ASIO driver from the pop-down. I've selected the M-Audio driver because I have an M-Audio M-Track interface. If you don't have another ASIO driver, select one of the ones from Magix. Make sure to go under Advanced and select the output device, like headphones or speakers, if you've selected ASIO for All or one of the Magix ASIO drivers. If you have an external keyboard for MIDI, Connect it to your computer using the USB to USB cable that likely came with the keyboard. If you have an older keyboard that only has a MIDI out port and your computer doesn't have a MIDI port, then you'll need a MIDI to USB interface with cables like this one. Once connected, turn on your keyboard. In the program settings, audio MIDI tab, MIDI, input device, open the pop down and select your external keyboard. If it isn't there, Restart Music Maker. If it's still not there, then it's not being recognized by your computer and you'll have to do some troubleshooting. If you don't have an external keyboard, you can use the built-in keyboard. To open it, click on the keyboard icon or press K. There are two ways to load instruments. The first way is from the Instruments tab, which you can open by using this button, or by pressing V. All instruments supplied with Music Maker purchased in the store and any third-party instruments are shown here. If you have many instruments, you can type in part of the name to find it quickly. 
You can also change the sort from the pop down. You can preview the instrument by pressing on the play button. Insert the instrument into the arranger by clicking on the arrow or by double clicking on it or by dragging it onto the track. I've selected Concert Grand LE, which everyone has. This opens the instrument user interface and also loads the demo MIDI file onto the arranger. The instrument is indicated in the track header. You can delete the MIDI object or open it to see how it works. Note that there's a keyboard at the bottom of the interface. This is for previewing the sounds only. I'll close the interface and I'll close the instruments window. The second way and the best way to load an instrument is by clicking on the plus sign in the track header. Most instruments have multiple patches or layers. Some instruments have multiple banks, each with multiple patches. I'll select Revolta 2 and to the right are banks and under each are patches. I'll select the base bank and the patch fretless like. The instrument interface opens and the instrument is indicated in the track header, but this time no MIDI file is put on the track. Note that Revolta does not have a preview keyboard. Revolta is a high quality monophonic analog synthesizer. To understand how to use it, I suggest that you click on the help question button to open the manual as it's quite detailed. I'll close the instrument interface. To remove an instrument, click on it in the track header and select Note VSTI. And I've removed Revolta 2. To replace an instrument already on the track, simply click on the icon in the track header and select another instrument. To reopen an instrument, click on the gear button in the track header between the instrument icon and its name. I've reopened Concert Grand LE. At the top is a box indicating Piano Default. I'll open the pop-down and we see the name Piano Default and some other commands. There's only one layer or patch for this instrument. I'll close the interface. To see the difference with the paid for Concert Grand, I'll click on the icon to get the list. Beside Concert Grand LE, we see only Piano Default, but beside Concert Grand, we see a list of many layers or patches. I'll select Piano Default. The instrument gets changed for Concert Grand, Piano Default. Now when I open the pop down at the top, we see the other layers or patches that are available. I'll select Piano Club. In the VSTI user interface, at the left end of the keyboard, if there's a green key, it plays the demo MIDI file that we already saw. There may be some yellow keys. There aren't any for Concert Grand, but here is an example under Pop Brass, which I'll open onto track 2. These yellow keys are articulations. More on that later. Back to the piano. The instrument keyboard is for previewing only and cannot be used for recording. Note the range of the samples. Not all instruments can use all keys of the built-in keyboard as you can see in Pop Brass, which is limited to less than three octaves. Switching back to Concert Grand, we have the full 88 note keyboard. The knobs and sliders are effects that are also available in Music Maker for use on audio objects. The instrument uses these effects and you can see them change when you change a patch. You can adjust these to change the sound. I won't go into any detail on these. Everyone has Vita 2, so I'll add it by clicking on the plus for track 3. I'll select Vita 2 and you can see the banks and the layers or patches under each. You may not have all of these. I want orchestral brass and for some reason they are grayed out, but I should have them. If you see the same thing, just select Vita from the first column and the interface opens. Open the pop down, go to brass, and now I can select patches under orchestral brass. I'll select all brass section. In the track header, we only see Vita, so I'll edit that to be Vita 2 all brass. Enter. I'll open the pop brass editor and arrange the windows side by side. Look at the keyboards. Pop Brass only goes down to G2. The Vita 2 All Brass keyboard goes down to A0. So using Vita 2 gives you a wider range of notes, but Pop Brass has articulations, those yellow keys, whereas Vita 2 doesn't. Let's add a drum track on track 4. I'll select Vita 2 again, Acoustic Drum Kit and Percussion, 
acoustic drum kit ballad, and the Vita 2 instrument opens. The instrument is indicated in the track header. I'll turn on MIDI record for the drums and try them out. Here you need to know which key corresponds to which instrument in the drum kit. Vita 2 uses, for the most part, the general MIDI percussion or drum key map. However, there are some minor differences. You can look these up on the internet. We'll see the listing later under the MIDI editor. If you have an external keyboard, you should have a listing of the notes corresponding to the GM percussion map. For now, note that the bass drum is played on both B0 and C1, then there are two snares on D1 and E1, followed by the toms up to D2. C2 sharp is a crash cymbal, and E flat 2 is a ride cymbal. That's enough to get started. You can close the instrument interface. Whatever settings were there will be used. Again, to reopen the interface, click on the gear icon in the track header or click on the gear icon on the keyboard. A word of caution here. VSTIs use a lot of computing resources, so you need a powerful machine if you want to run many simultaneously. Note also that instruments cannot be copied from one track to another. This means that you have to set the instrument for each track. To play an instrument using the built-in keyboard and for recording, turn on MIDI record mode in the track header of the desired track, make sure that an instrument has been selected, otherwise Microsoft General MIDI will be used by default. I've selected Concert Grand Piano Club. Now you can play the instrument on the selected track. If no track is selected for MIDI record, then the keyboard does not play. Remember you have to have MIDI record activated for the track and instrument that you want to play. Also in Music Maker, you can only activate one track at a time. I'll open the instrument interface, but this time by clicking on the gear button at the top of the keyboard. Now I'll play a note on the built-in keyboard. The corresponding letter keys on your computer keyboard are turned on. You can now see which letters to press for which note. Pressing a note on your computer keyboard also presses that note on the built-in keyboard and the instrument keyboard. Just over two octaves are available using the letters, but what if you want to play lower notes using your computer keyboard? The two octave buttons at the upper left of the keyboard move the keyboard keys down using the minus or up using the plus. You can scroll left and right with both keyboards using the horizontal scroll bar. On the instrument keyboard, we see the lowest note that can be played. Any that are grayed out cannot be played. Check this with a built-in keyboard. Thus, for each instrument, you will have to note the range of keys that can be played. If you click on the instrument keyboard, the letters on the lower keyboard disappear until you click back on it. We don't need the instrument interface open, so I'll close it. I'm going to end this part one here. In part two, We'll record some VST instruments and open the MIDI objects in the MIDI editor to make some adjustments. For now, open the various instruments and try playing and listening to the different patches for each instrument. Till later, make music.